Uh, good evening, uh, viewers and uh, listeners of Concerned uh, Citizens Media. Uh, thank you for joining me again, uh, December 21, 2021. Uh, so just a, a little bit update on the civil war in Ethiopia and uh, some other news. Uh, <coughs> uh, I will uh, just give you some uh, updates. Then I will start with uh, uh, President uh, Joe Biden's message for this uh, uh, challenging uh, COVID-19 and uh, the new uh, uh, strain. So, <clears throat> so the war now is uh, uh, continuing. Uh, it is happening in uh, Alamata and the Quorum uh, heavy fighting uh, uh, going on over there. Uh, so the Ethiopian Federal Force, uh, the Amara militia, the Fano, and all these uh, uh, militias from all over the country, plus the uh, Arterian Defense Force, uh, they are attempting to, you know, to reoccupy uh, Tigray region again, uh, despite uh, uh, despite uh, you know calls for a ceasefire and uh, end this blood bloodshed by international community, by United Nations, by U.S. and the African Union, despite all these calls, uh, they are now energized, uh, encouraged by the drones they are receiving from Turkey, China, United Arab Emirates plus the finance they are receiving from the, uh, the diaspora community. Uh, so they are just determined, uh, rejected the call for peace uh, to end the bloodshed. Now they are determined to go to uh, Tigray region uh, and reoccupy uh, the, uh, the Tigrayan people again. So heavy, heavy military conflict right now in Quorum and Alamata plus between the Tigray and the Afar uh, border area. So it's uh, very bloody. Uh, in other areas, uh, the revenge, revenge of attacks against the Oromo Wolos uh, and all these uh, express uh, support or enjoyed a very short moment with TPLF or uh, or Oromo Liberation Army in a, when they arrived in Shora, Shora Rabbit, Kamise, uh, Bati, and uh, other, uh, you know, Oromia special zones in Wallo. So these people are now uh, paying heavy uh, price. Uh, the Amara militia and uh, uh, the Fanos, the feather, including with the coordination of the federal force and uh, the regional uh, government, they are paying heavy price. Uh, they are, you know, in the shore of it, they are picking those people uh, suspected of supporting OLA or uh, TDF. So there is no an end for uh, bloodshed in Ethiopia. There is no end. There is no interest on a prosperity party and all these uh, Am Amara regional authorities to end bloodshed, to slow down this issue. Uh, they are taking revenge against the Oromos in Wallo area. Uh, there is massive uh, killing going on, uh, torture going on, and, uh, you know, uh, starving of the Wolos uh, going on. Plus on the other area on Wallaga uh, and uh, uh, other Oromia areas, uh, prosperity security forces are, you know, carrying out uh, brutalities uh, against the Oromos. Uh, in one report, uh, the security, the prosperity security forces uh, killed three teachers in Wallaga 
and uh, uh, removed their eyes, removed their eyes. This is brutality, really. I never seen, I never seen happening in Ethiopia. And also, they are burning the properties, the houses of uh, uh, those individuals. I mean, what kind of animosity is happening in Ethiopia? This is, uh, you know, I know they try to show like others not to, you know, to cooperate with oil or something. I think that's the plan. But they are, you know destroying the properties, the lives of innocent Oromos, innocent Oromos in Wolega region and other areas. So there is no ending site uh, for the bloodshed in that country. There is no sign for peace. There is no sign for reconciliation in Ethiopia. Very bad, very bad. Uh, because the group in power today uh, has no interest ending this bloodshed. Uh, they have been practicing such, such brutality for the last 27 plus three years since 2018 and before that. So these are all bloodthirsty people. They enjoy uh, bleeding people. They enjoy killing people. They enjoy torturing people. That's their culture. They just changed their names, but they didn't change their conduct. So that's, you know, still we need uh, you know, attention from the global community, uh, what is happening in Oromia, what is happening especially in a uh, world law area, uh, plus the conflict and now uh, heading to the Tigray region. So international community, they should, uh, they should, uh, they should be alarmed by these uh, atrocities happening in Ethiopia and uh, they should do something to restrain the prosperity party uh, in Ethiopia. So I have some more uh, 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 news, but let's start with uh, Biden's, President Biden's message for this COVID-19 message and uh, the, the new uh, variant, Amoco. Let's listen what it's said. President Joe Biden said Tuesday he has three tools to fight the rapid spread of COVID-19's formidable Omicron variant. The administration will increase support for hospitals, make half a billion free tests available to Americans, and expand vaccine access. He also encouraged the vaccinated to not panic. If you're not fully vaccinated, you have good reason to be concerned. You're at a high risk of getting sick. And if you get sick, you're likely to spread it to others, including friends and family. The unvaccinated have a significantly higher risk of ending up in a hospital <clears throat> or even dying. Almost everyone who has died from COVID-19 in the past many months has been unvaccinated. Unvaccinated. But if you're, on, if you're among the majority of Americans who are fully vaccinated, and especially if you've gotten the booster shot, that third shot, you're much, you have much, much less reason to worry. Biden acknowledged that persuading the holdouts about 40% of Americans are completely unvaccinated, is an enduring challenge for his administration. Look, the unvaccinated are responsible for their own choices. But those choices have been fueled by dangerous misinformation on cable TV and social media. You know, these companies and personalities are making money by peddling lies and allowing misinformation that can kill their own customers and their own supporters. It's wrong. It's immoral. I call on the purveyors of these lies and misinformation to stop it. Stop it now. In recent days, an unlikely pro-vaccine ally has emerged, former President Donald Trump. He recently admitted he had received a booster shot and was booed for it by some of his followers. Maybe one of the few things he and I agree on. People with booster shots are highly protected. Join them. Join us. But critics say this push for boosters is unjust when many around the world have yet to get a single shot. On Tuesday, the One Campaign, a health policy advocacy organization, warned that there is no way to hit the target of vaccinating 40% of the world's population by the end of the year, and that it could take more than a decade for low-income countries to match the vaccination levels of high-income countries. We are absolutely not winning the global war against the pandemic, um, as evidenced by Omicron. But of course, Delta showed us that and the original virus showed us that the lack of global leadership, the lack of coordinated leadership among countries, 
uh, the me first reaction by every you know government leader uh, during the first two years of this pandemic has meant that it has continued on longer at the cost of more lives and more livelihoods. Um, it, it's very clear what needs to happen. A national only strategy will not work. Critics also decry wealthy nations for hoarding essential supplies. On Tuesday, Biden defended the U.S. decision to stockpile protective equipment and ventilators as necessary to prepare for a run on hospitals. This week, as Americans stare down this threat, Biden sought to put a balm on his weary nation. I know you're tired. I really mean this, and I know you're frustrated. We all want this to be over, but we're still in it. And this is a critical moment. We also have more tools than we ever had before. We're ready. We'll get through this. I need a pal VOA News, the White House. <laughs> okay, I have uh, every child deserves a warm bed. Some eyes out of videos. Every family should have a roof <laughs> over their heads that will keep them safe from the bitter cold. Okay, I have two more videos. Uh, I'll share with you at the end of this reading. So, so that's the message. We are in a very uh, uh, tough situation with COVID-19 plus the new uh, uh, strain, uh, Omicron. Uh, so we are not out of the woods yet. So be careful. Uh, take, you know, the third shot, the booster. Uh, and also uh, do whatever you can uh, use common sense to protect yourself and your family okay let's uh, see the other reading material the first one is ethiopian government rejecting uh, to grand fighters ceasefire call uh, dashing hopes of an end to the conflict the Ethiopian government has dismissed call for a ceasefire from the grand fighters in the north of the country, saying the olive branch it previously offered them have been rejected many times. That's their excuse. The leader of Ethiopia's northern Tigray region had announced a withdrawal of rebel forces from the neighboring areas in the country on Sunday, a move that raised hopes of a ceasefire after 13 months of a war. But Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed's spokesperson, Bilene Sium, on Tuesday cast doubt on the mo motives of the Tigran People Liberation Front. The resolution of this phase is something that we are committed to in terms of ensuring that it, it, is, it has done in a peaceful way and through a political means. Nevertheless, any political solution will always be centered on justice, will be centered on accountability, and also in dialogue, Blaine told reporters in Addis Ababa. Blaine said that she could not say which parties would be engaging in dialogue, adding that whether the TPLF's actions are a strategic retreat or not will inevitably reveal itself. The grand forces and the Ethiopia's federal government have been engaged in conflict since November 2020, when Ethiopian Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed ordered a military offensive in Tigray following lengthy disputes over the governance the governance of the region. <clears throat> In a letter to United Nations Security Secretary General Antonio Guterres and the UN Security Council President Abdu Abari, dated Sunday and seen by the CNN on Monday, 
Debrecen Governor Mikhail, the leader of the Grand Regent, said he had ordered those units that are outside the borders of Tigray to withdraw to the border of Tigray with immediate effect. Having heard the call to withdrawal from both the international community and the Ethiopian federal government, Deborah Spohn said the TPLF trusted that their bold act of withdrawal will be a decisive opening act for peace, adding he hopes to commence peace negotiations following the cessation of hostilities. Abi has denied civilians were being harmed or the soldiers from neighboring Eritrea had joined the fight, but reports from international observers, human rights groups, and the CNN have uncovered multiple atrocities. In Sunday's letter, Deborah Sion asked the United Nations diplomat to give their full backing to an immediate cessation of hostilities followed by negotiations and called on the United Nations Security Council to establish a mechanism to ensure the immediate and variable cessation of all forms of hostilities and the total withdrawal of all external forces in the region. The Tigran leader also requested that requested the establishment of a no-fly zone for hostile aircraft over Tigray, with the exception of humanitarian and civilian purposes, as well as the imposition of arms embargo on Ethiopia and Eritrea. In the letter, Debrecen also expressed a deep disappointment that the international community, including the United Nations, didn't find a way to ensure food supplies made it into the region over the course of the conflict. We trust that you and the Security Council will redouble your effort to ensure that the war crimes of starvation is stopped and aid provided, he said. In September, United Nations Aid Chief Martin Griffin declared that swaths of the war-torn region were in the throes of a man-made famine and urged the Ethiopian government to facilitate access. The Ethiopian government has repeatedly rejected allegations that it, it is blocking aid. <clears throat> Responding to the letter on Tuesday, Bilene said that the Ethiopian government was still committed to a peaceful resolution. She pushed back on the TPLF's narrative uh, regarding the pullout from Afar and Amara, criticizing the international community and the media for amplifying their message. I think Ethiopia and its heroic forces do not need external validation, she said. As Ethiopians know the sacrifices that have been paid and the challenges that had been countered in order to gain the current status quo, as well as the setbacks the TPLF has encountered. TPLF spokesperson Getacho Redda said, in a, in a Monday tweet that by withdrawing, uh, we believe we have taken away whatever excuse the international community has to explain its feet dragging when it's come to putting pressure on Abi Ahmed and his regional partners in crime uh, to stop their genocidal campaign in Tigray. Last Friday, the United Nations Human Rights Council voted in a special session to establish a commission of human rights experts on the Ethiopian conflict, a move that the Ethiopian federal government said it will not cooperate with. 
Getacho also condemned Eritrean's involvement in recent engagement in Afar and Amara, calling on the international community to put pressure on the repeat offenders uh, ganging for yet another round of genocide in Tigray. Last week, the United, the United States voiced its concern regarding reports of mass detentions, killings, and forced expulsions of ethnic Tigrayans at the hands of Amara security forces in western Tigray, urging local leaders to renounce the violence. It also reiterated its call for Eritrea to withdraw its forces entirely from Ethiopia. Uh, credit CNN. But do the Eritreans listen to uh, concerns, uh, warning? No. Abi, does Abi listen? No. No. Now they are emboldened by the, uh, you know, drones and the other uh, military hardwares they are receiving from Turkey, uh, China, United Arab Emirates, and others. And uh, as I said, by the uh, uh, huge support they are getting from those pro Abi uh, diaspora community. Uh, so they are emboldened, they are encouraged, they want to finish. Uh, uh, this conflict again by force and uh, they want to continue the bloodshed uh, they rejected the call for ceasefire and uh, they call for dialogue uh, so they are uh, uh, wanted to finish the war uh, you know despite all these uh, calls and uh, they are also uh, you know, uh, preparing some kind of fake dialogue, uh, creating a you know fake commission, uh, you know, monitor controlled by Prosperity Party. We'll see. Okay, the next one is a statement on about uh, Ethiopian Foreign Ministry person Redwan Hussein. Uh, updating the ambassadors uh, uh, in Addis Ababa. State Minister Ambassador Ridwan Hussein briefed uh, today ambassadors stationed in Addis Ababa about the current situation in Ethiopia. His briefing covered the recent UNHRC special session on Ethiopia, the conflict in the northern part of the country. What is next after freeing occupied areas and uh, the proposed all-inclusive dialogue between political elites and the public? Regarding the covering of a special session of the UN Human Rights Council and establishment of an international commission of experts on Ethiopia, Ambassador Ridwan said it is unacceptable and Ethiopia will not cooperate with the setup of mechanism. What they scared of is uh, commission. Uh, as I said before, they are talking on their media. They are talking with the supporters of their uh, uh, on a social uh, platform. They are accusing T uh, TDF. Uh, you know, uh, did this, did this, did all this uh, raping and uh, genocide. They're accusing. If you are accusing, why you are scared of the independent investigation? Why you don't want to cooperate? You got something to hide? That's why you're scared? Uh, you prefer uh, using your media to accuse the international community and accuse TDF. So, if you have nothing to hide, please open up, cooperate. Let's find a closing for this conflict, for this bloodshed. <clears throat> Uh, the decision undermines the principles of subsidiary since Ethiopia is cooperating with the relevant human rights mechanisms besides having an effective human rights mechanism in the country, he said. <laughs> effective mechanism. Uh, Mr. Redouan, 
You don't know what is happening in Ethiopia. You don't know, or you are ignoring all these uh, atrocities happening in that country, the killing, the torture, and the extended, uh, you know, uh, detention of uh, politicians without any due process. He said the decision unduly politicized the council, disregard Ethiopia's commitment to take measure according to the recommendation put forward by the joint OHCHR and the Ethiopian Human Rights Commission findings. They are happy about that kind of finding. It would have been logical had the Council decided to launch a joint UN Ethiopian Human Rights Commission investigation on human rights abuses perpetrated by the TPLF in the Amara and the Afar region, he said. Ambassador Ridwan also spoke in detail about the humanitarian aid process in northern Ethiopia, including the Tigray region. He said that the government did everything to ensure humanitarian aid reached Tigray, but the TPLF uh, intercedents and the international communities reluctant to condemn its destructive acts dragged the humanitarian aid supply process. The state minister highlighted how the TPLA failure to reciprocate the government declaration of the unilateral humanitarian ceasefire last June and the international community's reluctance to appreciate it has exacerbated all the problems that ensued thereafter. They use that excuse now not to call for ceasefire at this time. Such foot dragging, he said, had emboldened the TPLF to invade adjacent regions, massacre many, destroy infrastructure, and uh, discredit religious institutions, and the gang rape women instigated public anger to put a strain on the humanitarian supply routes to Tigray. The continued the continued silence of the international community over the more than 1010 hijacked aid trucks, uh, 1010 hijacked aid trucks by the group, should not be taken lightly since it has contributed a lot in limiting humanitarian aid reach, he said. Speaking on the latest battlefield gain, Ambassador Redwan said the TPLF is on the back foot following decisive blows to its soldiers, contrary to its misleading narrative of withdrawal of its troops from occupied area areas out of its commitment, uh, its commitment to peace. However, he said, the government does not have an intention to pursue an all-out military operation in Tigray in chasing the terrorist group in every village and the towns, but it will make sure that the TPLF will not be able to wage an attack anymore. The government of Ethiopia also maintains its rights to ensure the territorial integrity of the country, and it will not foreclose, foreclose its prerogative rights to, to station the federal groups in all parts of the country, including Tigray, he added. On ensuring lasting peace in Ethiopia, he detailed the proposed plans to have an all-inclusive dialogue with the political elites and the public. He said almost all con contentious matters would be on the table during the dialogue including fundamental national issues and constitutional amendments. So that is the position of the Ethiopian government uh, and uh, on the ongoing situation in Ethiopia. So they are emboldened. Uh, as you can see, they are boasting uh, about their victory so that's the situation now.
uh, you don't see the sign of uh, ending the conflict. That's why you see the conflict is heading into Tigray region now. <clears throat> this is from U.S. State Department briefing uh, uh, answering the question about Ethiopia, uh, about the situation in Ethiopia from the daily briefing yesterday. The journalist asked, if I may, uh, shifting a bit, another area, there is a special envoy for Ethiopia. Ambassador Feldman was there, I guess, uh, a few weeks ago now. Situation seems to continue to unravel. What are, what are you guys seeing there? Any change on the outlook? Any success in the mediation efforts on the parts of Washington? Answering to this question, uh, Mr. Price from U.S. State Department, well, in terms of what we seek to achieve, we continue to seek an immediate cessation of hostilities, an end to ongoing humanitarian ri human rights abuses and violations, unhindered humanitarian access to Tigray and other parts of northern Ethiopia, and a negotiated resolution to the conflict, which not only puts at risk those throughout the country, but also poses a threat to regional security in the Horn of Africa. We know that there is not a military, there is not a military solution to this conflict. We, and do that, we, to that end, we support diplomacy as the first, the last, really the only option to resolve the ongoing conflict. We reiterate our call for the Ethiopian government to start a credible, inclusive national dialogue. Now, of course, today uh, we are aware of reports of Tigrayan withdrawal from some regions in the northern Ethiopia. We have long as you know, urged a cessation of hostilities, including the return of TPLF forces to Tigray. We have long urged that humanitarian access I spoke to, we have long urged an end to human, human rights abuses and violations, and for a negotiated resolution to the conflict. So, in fact, if we do see a movement of Tigrayan forces back into Tigray, that is something we would welcome. It is something we have called for, and we hope it opens the door to broader diplomacy. So that's from uh, Mr. Price from U.S. State Department. And, uh, but the sign is not that. The war is heavy right now, and uh, there is lack of interest on the government side to use this opportunity and uh, end this bloodshed. And, uh, you know, instead of doing that, they are uh, going around and uh, bragging about their victory. <clears throat> okay, the last part for reading. Iran fires Iran fires ballistic and cruise missile in a Gulf War games. Iran's Revolutionary Guard fired ballistic and cruise missiles on Tuesday during war game in the Gulf. The state TV reported amid heightened tension with the United States and Israel over possible Israeli plan to target Iranian nuclear sites, reports uh, Reuters. The use of ballistic missiles by the Revolutionary Guards Navy is a new concept and they hit their targets with 100% precision. Guards Chief General Hosseini Salami told the broadcaster. Iran says its ballistic missiles have a range of 
2,000 kilometer or 1,200 miles and capable of reaching Arch, Arch 4 Israel and U.S. bases in the region. That's very dangerous. On Monday, Iran warned of a crushing response to any move against it by Israel, which opposes efforts by world powers to revive Tehran's 2015 nuclear deal and has long threatened military action if diplomacy fails to prevent it from acquiring a nuclear bomb. Iran says its nuclear ambitions are peaceful. Israel is widely believed to be the only Middle Eastern country with a nuclear arsenal, but is not officially recognized. Yes, it is believed uh, uh, that Israel has a nuclear power, but nobody asked her to investigate, nobody asked her to be monitored, uh, because U.S. is on her side with a veto power. <clears throat> the exercise also included the uh, simulation, simultaneous firing of five cruise missiles and the launch of armed drones capable of hitting two targets each, Iranian media reported. The five-day drill began on Monday credit for this one middle east monitor so that's the end of the reading part and let's share a couple of videos and end today's presentation thank you again let me see there we go hundreds of thousands of people marched to the presidential palace in khartoum sunday in protest against October's military coup. Demonstrators in Sudan's capital city were met with volleys of tear gas and stun grenades from security forces, as some managed to reach the gates of the palace. Medics said scores of people were injured. Protest organizers called on more to join a planned sit-in after sundown. Reuters was not able to verify how many were able to reach the palace. Footage showed those who remained being tear gassed heavily. Protests against the coup have continued, even after the reinstatement of the Prime Minister last month, with demonstrators demanding no more military involvement at all in government in a transition towards free elections. A Sudanese doctors' committee said on Monday that one person had been shot dead in the protests in the Shargal Nile area across the river from Khartoum. <laughs> Turkey's president welcomed the leaders of 39 African countries to the third this is the last one. partnership summit in Istanbul. The three-day event eventually getting underway after being postponed twice because of COVID-19 health concerns. African solutions to Africa's problems was the summit's motto, with a common aspiration for peace, security, democracy and respect for human rights. In the last several years, our experience showed that leaving the fate of all the world to the mercy of five United Nations Security Council members is a mistake. It's a great injustice that the African continent, <laughs> with its population of 1.3 billion people, is not represented at the UN Security Council. It was a disgrace for humanity that only 6% of Africa's population has been vaccinated against COVID-19. Turkey plans to send 15 million vaccine doses to Africa. Erdogan's aiming to triple Turkey's $25 billion a year trade links with African countries. The African Union needs help in combating terrorism. I believe that as long as we do not ensure the peace and stability on the continent, it would be an illusion to think of development. And of course, investment and trade need a climate of peace and stability. We appreciate our partnership, our cooperation in these different areas, and we have a legitimate ambition to develop them further for the benefit of Africa and Turkey. 
Military experts say African leaders are looking to buy weapons at cheaper prices with fewer preconditions demanded by other companies, such as in the U.S. Turkey's armed forces already have military bases in parts of Africa, in Somalia, Morocco, and Tunisia. Tunisia's armed forces reported that took their first delivery of Turkish-built combat drones in September. Angola and Ethiopia are among the potential customers of the Turkish drones, credited with knocking out heavy armor and helping win battles in Libya and Nagorno-Karabakh. Seven of the ten fastest-growing countries are in Africa, as well as Turkey, China, France, the UAE, Saudi Arabia, India, all pay close attention to the business opportunities in the resource-rich continent. But Turkey says it's offering a partnership that is an alternative to what it calls the old and exploited approach of the West. Sinan Kosolo, Al Jazeera, Istanbul. Okay, that's the last video. So, yes, cooperation and uh, on a mutual benefit between Turkey and uh, African countries. It's okay, but uh, it is causing uh, chaos and uh, catastrophe in Ethiopia. For example, uh, Abiy Ahmed is getting uh, all these uh, military hardware drones and uh, using it to bomb uh, civilians, to destroy civilian structures uh, in Ethiopia. So that's not good. That's not good. So. Uh, you know, a relationship in one side is good, but in another side, when you have uh, a dictator like uh, Isaiah Safawarki or uh, Abi Ahmed, they will use whatever resources they have, uh, they get from Turkey or some somewhere else to destroy their own people for their own seat, for their own power. They don't care. They don't care how much blood uh, uh, they can spill or how much destruction they can endure. Uh, they don't care. The only thing they care about to stay in power forever. So the other one is, uh, I just appreciate the Sudanese people, their courage, determination uh, to face, you know, those uh, heavily armed security forces and uh, demanding justice demanding uh, freedom and uh, rejecting the military coup. Uh, so uh, fighting for the civilian administration. We are missing this in Ethiopia. Despite all this killing in Oromia, despite all this killing in the Wollo area, despite, you know, uh, the killing of Hachalu Hundesa, the killing of the military general in Ethiopia, the killing of the lawyer, Abdul Jabbar Hussein, the killing of, uh, you know, the teacher, uh, teachers, uh, teenagers, and disrespecting Abagadas, killing Abagadas in Karayu area. Uh, so, so many crimes, so many atrocities, and, uh, you know, uncontrolled mass detention of Oromos, including the, you know, Oromo politicians, senior Oromo politicians, and just uh, sitting on their neck, you know, trashing, disrespecting Oromos, and Oromos and others are just silent. The Sudanese didn't suffer that much under the current leadership, but they are still demanding their rights still fighting for their freedom so romos and others they should learn from the sudanese people to challenge the prosperity party uh, the dictators you know advised by isaias for work if they are, you know these are the same group these are the same dictator you will see uh, by so many indications they are in the same line You see people arrested, freed by the court, then rearrested by the police, by undercover operatives. That's a sign of dictatorship. That is a sign of dictatorship. And the killing people openly or taking uh, prisoners 
uh, from prison, legal prison, and killing them. That's that's brutality, and it's illegal. It's human rights violation. But Ethiopians are silent. The Oromos are silent. The 60 plus million. Those who are living in Adama, those who are living in Finfinne, those who are living in Shashamani, Bali, Harargi. Yes, there is there is a price to be paid, but don't scare of that price. The Sudanese, they are dying, they are getting injured, but they are coming out again and again for months now. So that's you know very, you know. Uh, we are missing this in Ethiopia. We are missing this. We have to correct this government. We have to challenge this government before it becomes completely like Idi Amin. Completely. If you don't challenge him, this guy, this guy, Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed, he will go that direction. If you don't challenge him, if you give him, give him all the authority, so that's my message. Please, please, the Oromos and others, challenge the government system you have. Demand your rights. Don't ignore when the, your rights are uh, diminished or ignored or abused. The other thing is prosperity party. It is better for you if you accept uh, the peace call from uh, TPLF and uh, end this bloodshed i know you are winning now but you were crying for a while last time and uh, declaring state of emergency and uh, doing whatever you can to save your seat to save your power now you are emboldened talking like a boss now and uh, wanting to continue the bloodshed this will not help the ethiopian government it will not help ethiopians and uh, the Amara militia, you must control yourself. Fano, you must control yourself. Don't go around in Oromia region and uh, cause the bloodshed. It will backfire against you one day. Stop. Stay in your area. I know you are heavily armed at this time, thanks to Abi Ahmed. So, please stop your criminal conduct. Stay, uh, be peaceful. Don't attack the Wallos. And uh, the federal government also, it is better for you if you control these militias and the Fanlos. And uh, please end this bloodshed. Thank you again. I uh, appreciate your comments. Subscribe to my channel. I will be back with other news and uh, uh, other updates. So long, everyone. And uh, be careful about this uh, COVID-19 and uh, the new uh, Omicron virus. So long.